Thank you, sister. It's a lovely evening on the hill tonight, and I'm honored to be with you here to celebrate this momentous occasion. Congratulations, class of 2014. We are here to celebrate you and recognize all of your work, all of the late nights, all of the dedication it took to get you here today. Give yourselves another applause. Before I go any further, I want to thank the sisters, the board of directors, parents, faculty, staff, and guests for celebrating with the seniors tonight. Graduating women and fellow Tologs. When Sister Celeste asked me to speak at your graduation, I was honored. But I have to confess, as I started to think about what I would say, I was afraid that I might not have enough wisdom or experiences I could share that are worthy of such an occasion. However, I am fortunate to have people around me that encourage me, remind me of my journey and accomplishments, and well, that maybe I'm not as young as I think I am. <laughs> You're probably expecting to hear me tell you what an amazing school Flint Ridge is and how this unique educational experience will shape and continue to define your years to come. That is completely true whether you believe it now or not. I'm sure you expect me to speak about how bright your future is and that you can accomplish whatever you set your mind to. I wholeheartedly believe that about each and every one of you. I could stand here and speak to the typical themes and graduation messages. However, I think there is more I should give you. At least I want to give you something more. But in preparing this speech, I kept wishing I could wait. Wait to give this speech when I'm older and wiser. But then I did the math. It's been 18 years since I sat in your seat wearing a white dress. Waiting is not an option. That is a familiar feeling for me, the desire to wait, to wait until I get older, to wait till I feel more comfortable and confident, to wait for it to be more convenient, for the time to be more right, to wait for it to be easier. So much of this desire to wait comes from self-doubt and a fear of failure. Doubting myself never got me anywhere. It is the risk of putting myself out there that causes self-doubt that's worth taking. So I accept this challenge, and I bring forth this challenge to you. Don't wait. Accept the challenges that are presented. Engage. Participate. One challenge that you will face, one that I'm facing in my life right now, is achieving the elusive work-life balance. Work-life balance is a hot concept for professionals. Finding a balance between work and the entire rest of your life. To be honest with you, there was a time that I was really angry because I felt that I had been sold a lie. I began to believe that it was a misconception that I as a woman could have it all. That we could successfully pursue a career and meaningfully participate in our families. I had gone out into the world with this expectation that I could and would be a successful professional and an awesome mother. In my pursuit, I came to question whether this was truly possible. Can a woman be in a role of power and responsibility professionally and be a great mother? One side seemed to have to be, a sac to be sacrificed for the other to succeed. So if there's one piece of advice I have, it's that you under no circumstances ever have children. <laughs> okay, I'm joking. That's not my advice at all. Having children is the most rewarding and joyous part of my life. But it has felt at times physically, mentally, and emotionally impossible to be a successful working woman and a devoted, loving mother. I recall a, a frustrated moment where I was complaining that this balance was impossible. And my husband asked what I thought I was missing. I have four beautiful, happy children, a supportive husband and family, and a job that I sincerely enjoy as I continue to climb the figurative corporate ladder. The pieces were all there to this working mother puzzle. Then I realized, maybe it was how I thought this life would look and feel that was off kilter. What did this perfect balance look like in my head? Did I think it would come without effort, without hardship? Did I think that I would always feel equally successful in both roles? I recognized that I was waiting for it to get easier. I was waiting for a time that I did it without questioning myself. And in doing so, I didn't realize that I was actually doing it. My self-doubt prevented me from appreciating that I was succeeding in this working mom reality. 
I've learned that life doesn't wait. There is only one journey, and each of us has our journey. We can't judge our lives by any one day. We can't be constantly looking to the future. I'm still on my way, still figuring it out as I go. And I finally learned to appreciate where I am now, what I'm doing today. And it actually fulfills me and propels me to be more to be more toward my next steps than if I were only focused on the future, missing out on today. When I applied to colleges, I wanted to go somewhere far away, forge my own path and feel independent. For the most part in high school, I was a rule follower. I spent a lot of time waiting for the next part of my journey to make my own choices and establish myself in a more meaningful way. Waiting for things to happen. It never brought anything to brag about. Like when I played hooky. I figure it's okay to tell you now that you're done with school. <laughs> so Christina Blaney and I, yep, that's her real name, we realized on the way to school that we had not completed our second period homework and Sister Ramona was not going to be happy. We decided to skip first period to complete our assignment. As we finished our homework, we realized that it was a mass schedule and that now we were going to be late to Sister Ramona's class. We were already halfway through our school day, so we decided to skip it. We treated ourselves to brunch at IHOP. It should have been fun and a little mischievous, but instead I felt horrible. I confessed my ditch day to my dad. I was ready for almost anything but his actual response, which was, and I quote, Sarah, the next time you decide to take a day off, I sure hope you do something more fun than vocab and eat pancakes. <laughs> Nothing worse than your dad calling you a little lame. <laughs> That may have encouraged me to stop waiting, to participate, to engage. As you will see in about three months, there's a lot to participate in college. Halfway through my first semester in Philadelphia at Villanova University, I let my grades slip. I was finally away from my parents, the responsibilities and expectations of my high school life, and I was starting to lose my discipline when it came to work. I spent the rest of that semester and the next few years trying to make a comeback from that. It was my first introduction to work-life balance. My husband, then my college sweetheart, used to say, our only job was to get good grades, and the rest of the time was ours to play. Good advice, just wish I had met him that first semester. I thought or hoped that my grades didn't matter at that point since I wasn't sure about grad school. But I think it also kept me from seriously considering grad school. I felt I had started off on the wrong foot, and it was challenging to bounce back but not impossible. I realized then that you need to be nimble, even with the best laid plans. Good grades can always help you, and you can turn things around. You can turn things around at any point. You just have to make the decision to do so. There is nothing to risk or regret about working hard. It is completely doable to both work and play hard. You don't have to give up one for the other. The trick in life is figuring out how to strike that balance. Whether it's going to college, working, or being a mother, or going to work and being a mother, always pursue that balance. And ladies, just on a side note about college, immediately figure out registration tricks and chip, tips, drop ad systems, reviews on professors, and how to set things up to your advantage. Learn about your resources, figure out the system, and learn how to be successful in it sooner rather than later. Be reasonable about your strengths and who you are. Don't sign up for 8.30 a.m. classes if you are not a morning person. <laughs> then you'll be free to try it all out. Push the boundaries of your comfort zone, do new things, meet new people, be open to new experiences, seize all the fun and successes that can be had beyond going wild at IHOP. I was a girl who always had a plan, or at least felt like I was working toward the next steps, always looking forward, waiting for the next phase. After I graduated from Villanova, I returned home to figure out what to do with the rest of my life. I waited for something to happen, for the right opportunity, maybe the perfect opportunity. When it didn't present itself to me, I felt lost and frustrated. I had been offered a job upon my return home from a TV production company that I had interned for between school years. I had initially declined because I was so preoccupied with figuring out the straight and narrow career path to the top of something. Today, I know very few people who have had what I considered then to be a clear career path. So after three months of unsuccessfully trying to figure out what to do with the rest of my life, I accepted that job. And if, like me, you don't know what you want to do, try to realize what you enjoy and are good at. 
most likely there's a job out there for you. Like a professional selfie taker, maybe? <laughs> I mean, there's got to be such a thing these days, right? Maybe not your highest aspiration, but it brings me to my next piece of advice. Be honest about who you are, both in person and electronically, because you are broadcasting it beyond the reach of your followers. Today, we are armed with what I will refer to as weapons of mass communication. We can, honest, we can constantly broadcast whatever and whenever we want. And how your social media past play out in the future remains to be seen, but it's worth considering. These tools and technologies are appealing because they connect us in a wider and more immediate way than we ever could be before. This makes the question of what you broadcast even more important, and how and what you are communicating. What is your truth? Are you creating a persona or communicating your authentic self? What empowers you? What inspires you? Ask yourself what you are broadcasting. If by chance your voice is heard, if by chance I can hear you, this crowd can hear you, what do you want to say? Who do you want us to see? Figure out what's in your head and your heart. When you post a photo of yourself, rather than worrying about your hair or profile, which is totally easy to do, worry about your depth of character. Worry about your quality of self. That's the selfie to be concerned with. This cacophony of noise distracts us from being present taking photos of a moment only to miss the moment entirely. I recently watched 20 children perform a spring recital on stage and 40 parents simultaneously watching their life-size children on iPhone and iPad screens. I'm not sure what I found more concerning, that the parents were missing a live performance or that the kids were performing for an audience of parents that never looked directly at them. We were all well in intended in capturing the moment, but we were all missing the moment together. We end up spending hours trying to catch a moment of time without being fully present to enjoy the moment. Time disappears as we are waiting to see how many likes we get. We can also be continually distracted by what we're not doing, what we should be accomplishing, what we should be doing, what else we could be doing, the amount of energy we waste by not just being in the moment, not being with our family, friends, colleagues, is precious time wasted. There is so much to miss and lose by not being present moments you'll treasure forever, and opportunities that will pass you up. And being present isn't enough. You need to participate. You'll get more out of everything if you're present and participating. Share with people. Share your joys and challenges, your hopes and goals. Don't let that self-doubt hold you back from being open and honest. It's healthy. It connects us. It keeps things interesting. And it's amazing how people will want to help you if you share with them what you want to accomplish. People will genuinely, genuinely want to be part of your goals and, and part of your journey and help you achieve your goals. It doesn't have to be just your journey. It can be our journey. Leverage your experiences and relationships to move you toward the, your goals. Call it networking if you want, but it can be so much deeper than how we've come to understand that word. I'm talking about a network of trusted advisors and loved ones your network. So if your network matters, and it does, pick people who make you feel good about yourself, who, want to, who make you want to be the best version of yourself. Ladies, make sure you surround yourself with people who appreciate you and make you feel comfortable. Seriously, ditch those who don't because they do, you don't need them and they'll keep you down. My truly happy friends and role models chose significant others who treat them, their home lives and careers, equally who sincerely want their partners to be happy and enjoy life, seize opportunities and thrive. Life is going to have challenges. Choose to be with someone who makes it all easier and more fun. Consciously decide who you want to spend your time with knowing that they will influence and shape you and your journey. Let it be for the better. I learned a lot in college, but what was really amazing was how much smarter my parents got while I was away. <laughs> if you haven't noticed yet, I think you will soon see that your parents have a lot more wisdom than I could ever fit into this speech. They are your biggest allies, and like it or not, you'll grow up to be like them in one way or another. And believe it or not, that's a good thing. I'm proud, although sometimes mortified, to hear my parents' words come out of my mouth. If you're sitting here listening to this commencement speech, they did something right. 
focus on those things and emulate them. So go forth on your journeys and seek that balance. Whatever you're pursuing, know that it can be achieved and that success is po possible. So lose any self-doubt, no more waiting. You can have it all. Congratulations and welcome to the Flint Ridge Alumni Sisterhood.